the headline of your your main website, which says, I help busy leaders and their teams get their most important work done in less time. And so I'm curious how you do that. And I'm sure there's one to three, maybe big things that come to mind to start us off with respect to interventions that you use with busy leaders, busy teams to, to help them improve performance. So we'd love to dive into to a number of those. So we're going to start with performance and then I'm going to layer on and we're going to talk about peak performance and then we'll talk about sustainable peak performance. So first performance, the term performance is truly refers to the act of running as it were. It's execution. It's about speed. It's the act of doing. This is really the heart of productivity. It is how can we most efficiently get the work done that we need to get done. So I really consider it again, the act of running. It's just speed and execution. Then you have peak performance. Peak performance is making sure that you're running, yes, as fast as humanly possible, but in the right direction. Because I can't tell you how many heartbreaking instances I've experienced where someone just brings, oh my gosh, so much exciting energy to the table. They bring so much, uh, just, just truly like passion to the table and they're running super fast, but just in the slightly wrong direction. And the outcome is not exactly where the team would want, where the organization would want, where they themselves want for the, even their own career. So to be peak performing is to make sure that we're keenly aware of our priorities, the right priorities. And we have alignments on what those priorities happen to be. So that's peak performance, the difference between peak performance and performance in and of itself. Then you have sustainable peak performance. Now to be sustainably peak performing means to be able to run as fast as you possibly can in the right direction and to be able to do that quarter after quarter year after year without burning out. Because at the end of the day, we are humans, not machines. We are biological creatures and we have biological laws and needs that we need to abide by. So we need to make sure that we're sustainably peak performing. So that's uh, the, the quick sort of or overarching, I would say ethos of our lab or our research team and the work that we do with, with teams and companies. Now, practically speaking, what do we install as best practices to make sure that we can hit sustainable peak performance? And I'd like to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue to go with the laws of three, right? Like great things happen in threes. There's the how of work, there's the what of work, right? And I'm gonna focus on those, I think in the beginning, and then we're gonna talk about the sustainability piece. So in terms of, how people go about work. I think this is something that is underemphasized across the board. If I had it my way, we'd even we'd teach children from the earliest age possible how to learn in school. When we start a job, we need instead of focusing so much on the job description, the what of work. I think we ought to be focusing just as hard on the how of work. How should we go about getting what we want done done? What is the best practice for having a meeting? Something as simple as that. What, is, what are the best practices for clear communication, for collaboration, for innovation, for work execution and task execution? We don't typically focus on the how, and that's something that our lab specializes in. It's really focusing on the how. Uh, and we have methodologies. One of them that I can talk to you about are called focus sprints. And focus sprints are really intentional short periods of time where an individual is encouraged to one, identify exactly what they'd like to accomplish in that focus sprint, really intentionally focusing on a task or a set of tasks that they'd like to be done with at the end of, let's say, for example, it's a one hour focus sprint, then actually blocking that time off in the calendar, making sure that we're setting expectations with your team, especially if you share a calendar with your team, that there's a shared language and folks can see that you're clearly doing a focus sprint. This will allow me as the individual doing the focus sprint to feel comfortable, not feeling like I need to be immediately responsive on Slack or email, that everyone knows that I'm sitting down, I'm doing heads down work, I'm intensely focusing, I'm doing the heaviest lift item for the team, for the company right now. I'm not taking a siesta and just being MIA and unresponsive for the sake of it. Like, please trust. And that lets me be comfortable. Now my hormones, there's anticipatory hormones that happen when I know a, a time is coming for focus. Very similar to when you know that a presentation is coming up, let's say for example, and people get the butterflies, they get some cortisol and adrenaline going like right before a big presentation, before you get up on stage, or nowadays we can call it the Zoom stage, <laughs> seems just as common. 
But right before a big presentation, you go up, yeah, you get those like butterflies. We want that. That's your biology helping you. That's your biology saying, listen, just in case that cup of coffee and last night's sleep isn't enough, I'm giving you a boost. I'm giving you a boost because evidently your brain is telling your body like, oh, we care about this. We don't want to, we don't want to fudge this up. We want to make sure this goes well. If you know a focus sprint is coming, similar things will happen. Hormones will start going and you're going to, it's going to help put you in the brain state of focus, of deep focus, of flow, of getting into a state of flow. So if you can, if you know a focus sprint is coming a few hours in advance, it's just helping your brain get into that right headspace. So we set the time up in the calendar in advance. Then we make sure that we do what we call, by the way, digital hygiene in our lab. That's a huge thing that we focus on when we work with teams. Digital hygiene means your relationship with your notifications and your devices. That means phone is out of sight, out of mind. It is the number one drainer of cognitive performance and cognitive capacity in the 21st century by a large margin. Our relationship with our phones and the notifications specifically coming out of all of our devices. It's draining human capital. Let me just put it that way. It's not possible for us to focus to actually get into deep work when we're getting interrupted every minute or two couple minutes. But focus sprints are probably the bread and butter of what we install at companies with teams to make them as effective and, and you know, in many ways, superhuman um, as we call it. And that's really focusing on the how of work. Uh, and the what of work is really those tasks that you choose. It's that the peak part of the peak performance that we talk about. And then the, in the very end to, to round this out, we talk about burnout prevention techniques stress management, energy management, making sure that you know exactly your, for example, I'll give you an example, your biological chronotype. A chronotype is a genetic factor that every person is born with. And it's your, essentially your preset circadian rhythm in which humans do not have the same one, which we thought, by the way, this was the 2017 Nobel prize in medicine, by the way. So a couple of years before the pandemic hit, we found out as a scientific community that humans do not have one preset circadian rhythm. In general, yes, humans are awake during the day and asleep at night, but we do have a few different circadian rhythms and it's a genetic component. So you can't change it. It doesn't evolve, you know, it doesn't change in your lifetime. And this is science behind colloquially what we've all kind of said, like, oh, someone's a morning person. Someone's a night owl. There's now actual science to back that up. So we have three core types, AM shifted, which means essentially morning bird. It's people that wake up with the sun and go down with the sun. Then you have PM shifted folks on the opposite end of the spectrum. This is, this is uh, I am a PM shifted person. We're the minority genetically in the human population. And then you've got the majority of the human population. These are folks that are called biphasic. Biphasic stands for two, bi, phase, uh, meaning peak. So two peaks. These are folks that have a pretty amazing uh, spike in energy levels and cognitive capacity about mid-morning until about after lunch. And then they have a pretty severe afternoon dip. And then they have a second wind later in the day. And then you have shifting rhythms in between, but those are the, the three core types. So we make sure we chronotype everybody that we work with. Everyone knows when to do their focus prints, when they're at their, their peak performance hours, because they can get so much more done during their peak than they would other, other times a day. And that's sort of uh, a, a quick version of, of what we what we install with teams and companies. If what you've heard on Flow Research Collective Radio has been helpful, please consider doing us a solid and leaving us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you are listening to this. Reviews help us connect to a wider audience so we can get these peak performance principles out to more people. Thank you.